Welcome back to Tori Talks Wrestling. In today's episode, we're going over gimmicks of wrestlers that are kind of copied from other wrestlers. Top 10, yeah. And we're going to say it's in who we kind of like better of each thing. Gimmick infringement video. So definitely comment out of the pairs that we did who you think is better and your picks for who you think is a ripoff. Now, Dad's number 10. My number 10 is going to make people go, whoop de whoop <laughs> And that is... The Nature Boy! The original Nature Boy is Buddy Rogers. <gasps> what? You mean it wasn't Ric Flair? No. Ric Flair ripped off the Nature Boy gimmick from Buddy Rogers. <laughs> so, wrestling fans of today, guess what? Flair's not the original Nate. And who was your favorite of the two? Well, Ric Flair had a 78-year career. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> he's still going strong. Yeah. <laughs> now, my number 10. I don't like the new wrestler. You guys know that. And that's John Moxley. And he ripped off a mix of Brian Pullman and Stone Cold Steve Austin. He wants to act like he's this tough little bad boy over here being like, Oh yeah, I'll beat anybody up. I'm crazy. I'll do this and that. But he's so bad at it because, like, in one match, like, whenever you blade, you don't show that you're blading. Yeah, that was pretty awful. He just sat there in the corner and went, Despicable. Yeah, and when you know my thoughts on this, you know who I think is better. Brian Pullman and Stone Cold Steve Austin are legendary wrestlers. They're geniuses. I mean, I mean, Brian Pullman literally shocked the world because like the crazy stuff that he did, and John Moxley's over here being like, "Yeah, I'm making history." No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're making people turn off their TV. Yes. My number nine is. Alberto Del Rio! Ripping off JBL. Coming out there in the car, getting out with the towel around his neck. And the whole premise of the character is he has so much money, he's just pompous and he's a jerk. Mm -hmm. But he, they, like, they didn't even wait more than, like, what, two years? Mm -hmm. If that, between uh, JBL and Del Rio, they did the same gimmick? Mm-hmm. So, sorry, as much as I like Del Rio, and he was a good wrestler, mm-hmm. I'm a JBL guy. Okay, my number nine is uh, kind of lower in the ranking because I guess it's not a direct rip-off, but it was around the same time era. Um, Cameron, who was in the Funkadactyls with Naomi, and Naomi pretty much progressed to like be a champion and all this stuff, and Cameron was just kind of left behind. That's how you Funkadactyl dance. <laughs> Eva Murray was around this time, too. And I believe that they were kind of the same gimmick, honestly. Cameron went in there with a skirt and a mirror. And she was like, oh, look at me doing my makeup in the ring. And then Eva Marie was doing the same thing, pretty much. Like, oh, I'm so beautiful. No one cares. <laughs> and honestly, I don't really prefer either of them. In ring, in ring work-wise, they were both awful to watch. Yes. My number eight didn't exactly steal the character, just the wrestling style. Mm-hmm. And that is... Hush! 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 <laughs> hush! The Berserker. John Nord. He's the Viking. Carries a sword to the ring. Don't know why. Never stabbed anybody with it. And also, fun fact, he was supposed to be the Undertaker. Rumor is he was originally supposed to be the Undertaker, but he turned it down. Mm -hmm. But he did this Viking character called the Berserker. And in that, he pretty much channeled Bruiser Brody. He stole Brody's style, which he kind of already used, but he really amplified it up to be like Bruiser Brody 2.0. And it Mm -hmm. was right after Brody died, and this guy was a major uh, Bruiser Brody fan. So he... I think he was almost trying to like pay homage to his wrestling hero, mm-hmm. but it, to wrestling fans, it almost came off as a ripoff. Yeah. So what is your number eight? My number eight is Demolition and the Road Warriors. So obviously, uh, the Road Warriors were <laughs> a power team at WCW, and they were like one of very few people that Vince could not get. Vince could not sign them. So he's like, I'm just going to make my own. And he got Demolition, which originally started with two, and then they added the third member later. But 
I, and you can tell it's definitely like the gear they wear, the face paint is definitely inspired by. I put this little on the list. Completely different. I, I like both of them. I'm not saying I don't like one. Um, but if I had to pick one I like, it would probably actually be Demolition. So. There you go. <laughs> okay, my number seven is a lot of people don't even know either one of these teams. But if you ever look them up on YouTube, one of them has a really great music video. And it's not the one that ripped off the other one. The one that ripped off the other one was the Fantastics. They were really, really good. They were a really good tag team, but they came out wearing like these little bow tie looking things and these sequin vests. Ew. And the problem is, it was almost a direct rip off of Steve Kern and Stan Lane, the fabulous ones. Please go look up the fabulous ones music video. Don't on watch it. It's the weirdest it's, it's thing the, ever. The greatest thing you'll ever see. But they pretty much were an exact ripoff of the Fabulous Ones. And it just... It's like they always followed the Rock and Roll Express. Wherever the Rock and Roll Express left, the Fantastics came in. And they could never get over as well as Rock and Roll. Because Rock and Roll set the standard here. And nobody else could match it. It wouldn't have mattered who it was. Fantastics were great. They were a great tag team. But they ripped off the Fabulous Ones. My number seven is Chuck Palumbo and The Undertaker. Now, again, this is lower on my list because Chuck Palumbo was actually a motorcycle person, and so it makes sense, but it was at the same time era that Undertaker's doing his biker thing, and it just kind of came up as a rip-off, even though, you know, it at least did fit him as a person. And obviously, you know, I'm going to pick the Undertaker. <laughs> Over Chuck Palumbo? Yes. I like Palumbo, but you're right. <laughs> so, my number six... Uh, the Road Warriors had left Mid South, and Bill Watts wanted. Okay, I gotta have two muscle bound guys that paint their face and just go in there and maul people. Well, there just so happened to be a tag team in Tennessee called the Freedom Fighters, and they wasn't getting over in Tennessee. So Bill Watts like, I'll use them. Two, I mean, just jacked up guys, and uh, Steve Borden and Jim Helwig. I mean, neither one of them really ever made any money in this business. But they came in, painted their faces, and they called them the Blade Runners. And they were an exact ripoff. I mean, exact, because they were literally taking the place of the Road Warriors. Oh, by the way, that's Sting and the Ultimate Warrior. Mm -hmm. My number six is Batista and Mason Ryan. Mason Ryan was actually the ripoff one. Um, really, it really wasn't his fault, to be honest. But around the time that Batista, you know, I'm done, I'm leaving, I'm going acting or whatever. Yeah. There was a wrestler in the Nexus named Mason Ryan who looked exactly like him. Exactly. Exactly. Back so, in the 80s, they would have made them wrestling brothers. It's no one's fault, um, but it's just the way that it happened. Your but, preference on that? I really don't have one. I'm not a Batista fan. And uh, really, we didn't really get to see much Mason Ryan because of that. Yeah. Okay, so my number five is going to strike people a little bit funny because most people have never heard of the exotic one, Adrian Street. He came to the ring with makeup and his hair and pigtails. And he would frolic around the ring. Uh -huh. Just frolic. Now, this was the early to mid-80s. So... So men didn't frolic. Mm -hmm. The whole point of his character was for people to hate him. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I want to beat him up. The problem is, no one could beat him up. And he had a woman with him. So you're always questioning, like, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> and his character is pretty much a ripoff of the original flamboyant one, Gorgeous George. Mm-hmm. Who pulled that gimmick off in like the... With his hair and his robe. Yeah, Gorgeous and... George would come to the ring and have flowers yeah. in his hair. But he was a legit bad dude. Like, mm -hmm. if, if, if a fan tried to get him in the street, he would hurt them. Mm -hmm. Same way with Adrian Street. In fact, one of my favorite stories I've ever heard in my life had to do with Adrian Street and a guy in England by the name of Jimmy Savile. Oh. <laughs> Please go look up Adrian Street and Jimmy Savile. Yes. It's a great story. Karma. Savile is not a good guy. Mm -hmm. No. 
This is like the definition of like revenge, and it's the best. And he didn't even know it. He was just. I know that's the funny part. He was part. just beating somebody up. I wish I could. They videoed it. I wish I, <laughs> that'd be like the most satisfying video ever to watch. It would be. It would be very good. So Adrian Street, I preferred over Gorgeous George. Okay, my number five. Uh, is Flash Funk and Brodus Clay. Brodus Clay, you might know him as Tyrus, who does stuff on the news now, and he, you know. He does, like, dolphin saving stuff. He's a pretty cool dude. We like some bros, Clay. But this gimmick did not go over well. It's pretty much, there's these dancing dudes that just like to have fun. But it did not go over well, even though it was pretty fun, to be honest. The Funkasaurus? Yeah. And I actually like Brodus Clay. <laughs> we, we like some Brodus Clay. My number four... <laughs> Is another character that most of you have never heard of because it was in the AWA when the AWA was being watched by no one. And that character was the trooper. He was a state trooper. That was his character. But it was, you have to say the original police officer, wrestler, has to be the big boss man. So anybody that comes out being a cop after that, they're ripping off the big boss man. The Trooper actually went on later in life to become the Patriot. So that was where he made his most success. But the Trooper is a ripoff of the Boss Man, and I'm a very big Boss Man fan. My number four is two people that I both, uh, both of them I like. Um, and that's Waylon Mercy and Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is actually kind of the ripoff, even though I, 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 I like both of them. But, I mean, you guys know I'm going to pick Bray Wyatt. But it's because Waylon Mercy is, didn't really have a chance to get over. And also, I would like to say that this character was inspired by Robert De Niro's character in the movie... Oh, what's it called? Cape Fear. Cape Fear, thank you. I never watched it, but um, it's inspired by that, and it's apparently a very disturbing movie. Well, by the time Dan Spivey got to WWE mm-hmm. to play Waylon Mercy... Mm-hmm. He was in such bad physical shape, he couldn't work hardly at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was the first character I can think of that was a bad guy. But you kind of felt like he was doing what he thought was right. Yeah. So there's a there's almost like a mercy mm-hmm. in the your liking of Waylon Mercy. I believe he might even do the voice of who? Mercy the Buzzard. So that's why you see uh, Mercy the Buzzard wearing that Hawaiian shirt, Mm -hmm. and he's got this voice like this. That's actually Dan Spivey doing the voice of Mercy the Buzzard, Mm -hmm. which I think is pretty cool. It is a cool Easter egg. So my number three is really only a ripoff of one, but they took the name from two. And uh, Vern Gagne up in the AWA, he was out of touch with culture by this time at all. But he's like, you know what? These young whippersnapper kids, they like that rock and roll music. And down south, the Rock and Roll Express is really taken off. So I'm going to have my own. Well, that Midnight Express is pretty good too. So I'm going to take it. Half Midnight, half Rock and Roll. And that's where he formed the Midnight Rockers. <laughs> True story. <laughs> the Midnight Rockers. Real subtle. Real subtle there, Vern. <laughs> now, the Midnight Rockers went on to have some success in the wrestling business. Uh, Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels. And they were great. They were... I would put them in a top ten tag team list any day of the week. However, they took their name from probably two of the top three tag teams. So, the Midnight Rockers is a ripoff of... Really, mostly the Rock and Roll Express. They just put the name Midnight on there because the Midnight Express was popular, too. So, what would you say is your number three? My number three is Abyss and Mankind. And Abyss was a person in Tina that wore masks like Mankind, acted exactly like him, and it... I mean, you guys know I prefer Mankind. Um, to be fair, I never really watched Tina, so I've never, like watched Abyss that much I, but um just the way he acts and looks is pretty much a direct rip off and I just think be more original you know the whole Abyss thing I believe if I'm not mistaken that was Dutch Mantel's creation for Joseph Parks 
because mm-hmm. Joseph Parks was this big guy that was doing all this crazy stuff, but he just wasn't quite getting over. Mm-hmm. And so Dutch is like, wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Change your name to Abyss or something. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Abyss. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Dutch. So my number two is pretty much a direct ripoff, once again, of a tag team by the name of the Road Warriors. And I feel like it's a true ripoff. And that is the Powers of Pain. The Warlord and the Barbarian. They came in and actually feuded with the Road Warriors. They had like bench press competitions and all stuff. And uh, I will say the Powers of Pain were both very great wrestlers. Mm-hmm. And people to this day still fear the Barbarian. Like They're like, oh yeah, we're not messing with him. Even at age like whatever he is now, 60 something. Uh, but the Powers of Pain... They even shaved their heads like the Road Warriors. I mean, it was there was no hiding that whatsoever. But they got over. They did well for themselves. They made some money. But they are an exact ripoff of the Road Warriors. What is your number two? My number two is the world's greatest tag team in the American Alpha. American Alpha is the ripoff. Um, so pretty much in the 2000s, Kurt Angle put together this Olympic tag team called the world's greatest tag team and then 10 years later he did it again with American Alpha and they claimed that one of the kids was his son and he wasn't and it was very easy to figure out he wasn't because all you had to do is google hey is so and so Kurt Angle's son and everybody's like no so (laughs) you're just like (laughs) you know like that's it and my number one is going to reference back to my number 10 and that is the nature boy Buddy Landell ripping off Ric Flair who ripped off Buddy Rogers. Now, Buddy Landell was great. He was a really great wrestler. He had some substance abuse addictions that he just couldn't kick. However, he was great. Uh, He actually was supposed to win a world championship, I believe it was, at one time. And he decided he didn't want to leave his motel room that day. So they they let someone else win it. But he was supposed to pick up the torch and carry it. When Ric Flair needed some time off. When he couldn't pick up that torch and carry it, Ric Flair had to keep working. Uh, It was just a big thing. He ended up taking the Nature Boy gimmick and going around the country doing that. He bleached his hair. Uh, Buddy Landell, if you ever are bored and you're looking for a good wrestler you've never really watched, go look up some Buddy Landell. He did some good stuff. My number one is Ryback ripping off Goldberg. What? Nobody could figure this one out. At all. It wasn't obvious at all. How could I ever figure it out? Because it's super obvious. <laughs> yeah. Me more. Yeah. Pretty much. It's. It wasn't. I mean, I didn't even like Goldberg, and I prefer Goldberg. It was that bad. It was that bad. It was bad. Literally, the coolest thing was his entrance. Because, like, it had this, like, cool chompy thing. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Feed yeah. me more. <laughs> And that was it. That was all the redeeming qualities there were. I don't like Goldberg that much, but I need, even he takes the cake on this one. Right. Ryback should have stayed the cowboy he was in the Nexus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goldberg was more entertaining than, yeah. than Ryback for sure. Mm-hmm. Ryback was boring. Mm-hmm. Ryback was boring. And Ryback hurt people. Yeah. Kind of like Goldberg. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Thank you for watching. Comment who you think is better out of these people. And who you think ripped off who uh, that we didn't include. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Go check out my merch store and my other two channels in the description below. Bye. Hey. Heish. Heish. Hey, everybody. This is The Stinger here with Tori. And if you haven't figured it out yet, Tori does everything. This is proof positive. It's showtime in Tori's world every day. Why? Because she does everything. It's showtime. And Tori now has merch. Go check it out at bonfire.com. Link in the description and under the About tab. Bye!